Hola a todos y bienvenidos a este, pues este, esta clase. Eh, estoy muy contento de estar aquí con vosotros hoy y espero que vosotros también estéis muy contentos de aprender algo de español conmigo. I hope that you're all looking forward to doing a little bit of Spanish learning with me today. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I am the founder of Coffee Break Languages and I lead a fantastic team of language teachers and professionals and we love putting together new content for you. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of work on grammar. We're going to be looking at the imperfect tense in Spanish. And if you're joining us, I'm guessing that's why you're here. Let me know where you're watching. It's always great to know where you're watching from. We're broadcasting on uh, our YouTube channels for Coffee Break Languages and for Coffee Break Spanish. And we're also broadcasting on our Coffee Break Spanish Facebook page. So fingers crossed everything is working. Let me just check that the slides are working. The slides are working. That all looks fine. I think that means we are good to go. As I say, let me know where you're watching from. We're going to be looking at the imperfect tense. There are different tenses um, in, in Spanish for talking about the past. And this is a particular one which uh, will help you talk about what you used to do or what you were doing when something else happened, for example. And we're going to be looking at lots of examples of this and trying to work out how it all fits together and so that you know when to use the imperfect versus uh, another tense. So... Um, if you have any questions about the masterclass in particular, or indeed just about the imperfect tense, I'm very happy to answer them today. Um, we do have some people watching and we've already got questions, which is great. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll start with the lesson part, focus on the imperfect, and then we'll come back to talking a little about the masterclass a bit later on. So let's begin to talk about the imperfect. And we're going to start in English. That may seem a little bit strange, but I'm going to start in English and think first of all about the way in which we talk about the past in English, because I think that will help us know exactly how to refer to different things in Spanish if we can sort it in our heads exactly what we're talking about. So that first sentence there, we went to Argentina and Chile last year. Okay, let's have a think about that. I have traveled to lots of South American countries. And uh, uh, my father used to live in Buenos Aires. So three different situations in English. And what we're trying to really work out here is what exactly is happening. We've got, we went to Argentina and Chile last year. That was a, a single completed action in the past. Last year, we traveled to Argentina and Chile. Boom, done. Okay, the next example, I have traveled to lots of South American countries. That's a have done something. So that is what we would call in English a present perfect in Spanish, a perfect tense. I have traveled to lots of South American countries. And the third one there, my father used to live. We're describing what was going on on an ongoing situation. My father used to live in Buenos Aires. Now, what we need to do is think about how this all works in Spanish. And we're focusing on that last example there. My father used to live in Buenos Aires because that is the situation where we're using the imperfect tense. The imperfect tense in Spanish is used for repeated actions in the past, things that happened on an ongoing basis. Every morning we uh, went to the swimming pool before school, something like that. Also ongoing actions in the past, incomplete actions in the past, or talking about states of being for feel, for feelings or weather and, and things like that. It describes what we used to do, like my father used to live in Buenos Aires, or something that was done on more than one occasion. I used to dance every day as a child, for example. It describes what was happening, and sometimes that is when something else happened. So we were watching television at the time. I was working last night when a clap of thunder uh, suddenly surprised me and there was lightning outside. So we were doing something when something else happened. So the something else happening, that's a different tense. That would normally be the preterite in Spanish. But when what we were doing at the time, that's another example of the imperfect. Now, It can also, and be very careful with this one, it can also translate would. 
but only referring to a repeated action in the past. And you know the, the kind of wood I'm talking about here. Oh, they would walk along the beach hand in hand at sunset and the waves were lapping in the sea. There we're talking about a kind of imagined past, a fond looking back at the past. It's not they would walk along the beach hand in hand if they had the opportunity. That's, that's a different wood, that's a conditional. But here this wood in the imperfect refers to something that happened in the past but just be careful with it. That's a, a, a little warning on, on, on that one. So the imperfect tense is normally used to talk about most descriptions in the past. When we're talking about people or places or clothes or feelings or weather, it was warm and he wore a t-shirt and shorts. So both verbs there, it was warm and he wore a t-shirt and shorts. He was wearing, it's the same as saying that. So we would use the imperfect there for that. And there are some imperfect triggers. And when we know these triggers, that helps us remember the imperfect. So these triggers, like, for example, a veces, sometimes, frecuentemente, frequently, cada día, every day, siempre, always, todos los días, all, like, literally all the days, every day, de vez en cuando, sometimes. So all of these are triggers for the imperfect. And, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, these are supposed to, th these are uh, always expressions that suggest that you're going to use an imperfect tense. Okay, so far so good. Let me know in the comments by putting a one if you're confused, a two if some of this is making sense, or a three if all good so far, or everything is good so far. And it's good to, to hear how things are going if you let me know in the comments by just putting one, two or three. That helps me identify whether things are going okay. We've got Sam joining us in Madrid. Sam, great to have you here. We've got Tina uh, watching from Sweden. Yette bra. Um, we've got some threes coming in. That's always good to see some threes. All good so far, UK. Brilliant. Okay, let's move on because now we need to think about how this all works in Spanish. And we're going to start by looking at how to conjugate the imperfect tense. So conjugating the imperfect is actually really quite straightforward. There are the, the, the first selection of verbs is for AR verbs. And this is where we have the endings ABBA, ABBAS, ABBA, ABBAMOS, ABBAIS, ABBAN. Now, you may know that I'm a huge ABBA fan. I love the music of ABBA, the Swedish supergroup. Um, so I particularly enjoy the imperfect subjunct, the, the imperfect endings of an AR verb. Um, let's look at an example. Um, well, before we do that, we're going to look at ER and IR verbs. Um, so... First of all, uh, the, the good news, actually, before we do that, let's just jump back to Ava. I'll give you an example. So we're going to say cantar, cantar to sing. So I was singing, cantaba. You were singing, cantabas. He or she or you formal were singing, cantaba. We were singing, cantábamos. You, plural, were singing, cantabais. And they were singing or ustedes were singing, cantaban. So cantaba, cantabas, cantaba, cantábamos, cantabais, cantaban. Muy fácil. Let's move on and look at the other selection of, or the other conjugation, if you like, of ER and IR verbs, because they all conjugate the same way. Um, in the imperfect, it's IA, IAS, IA, IAMOS, IAIS, IAN. So let's take BENDER, to sell. I was selling, BENDIA. You were selling, BENDIAS. He or she or you, polite, were selling. BENDIA. We were selling, BENDIAMOS. You all were selling, BENDIAIS. They were selling, BENDIAN. And same goes for uh, IR verbs. So we've got a verb like abrir. Abría, abrías, abría, abríamos, abríais, abrían. Muy fácil. Now, I've got some more good news. And that is about irregular verbs in the imperfect. Because, believe it or not, there are very few of them. Let's take a look at these now. First of all, we've got ir, the verb to go. So I was going iba. It kind of combines the ia and the aba endings in a sense. Iba, then you were going ibas. He or she or you were going Eva, you formal. We were going Ivamos, you all were going Ivais, they were going, or ustedes were going Ivan. So that's the ear, the verb ear in the imperfect. We've got ser in the imperfect, and again, this is another irregular. Um, so we've got era, eras, era, eramos, erais, eran. Muy fácil. I was, you were, he was, and, and so on. 
And believe it or not, there's only one other irregular verb in Spanish in the imperfect tense, and that is ver. And there we've got a combination again, looking like the ia endings, but we've got an added e, the letter e as well. Beia. Quite tricky to say. There's three separate syllables there. Beia. Beia. Then beias, beia, beiamos, beiais, beian. Okay. That is all you need to know about conjugating the, perfect, the imperfect tense in Spanish. Believe it or not, that's everything. So we've got the ava endings for our ER verb, the ia endings for ER and IR verbs, and then three irregulars, ser, ir, and ber. And that's it. That's good news, isn't it? Come on, you have to admit that that is good news, that we've only got these three irregular verbs in the imperfect. So, again, so far so good. Let me know in, the, con in the, the comments, are you confused? Are some of this making sense? Perhaps the imperfect is new to you. Perhaps this is a lot of information and that's absolutely fine. Don't worry about that. Obviously, when we're uh, doing a live stream, we've got viewers who have just started learning Spanish or who have been learning for many years. So for many of you, this might be really straightforward. For some of you, it might be completely new. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry. It's always just good to know roughly where we are in the comments. So give me a one, two or three. Um, as to where things are. It looks like this is all making sense so far uh, for many of you. Great. Okay, now what we're going to do now is a little bit of listening practice. And this listening practice is going to let you listen to some a, a conversation which is going to include lots of examples of the imperfect tense. And that way, you're putting into practice what you've just learned. So listen out for these endings, the ava, the ia endings. And we're going to be listening to a conversation. And this is taken from our masterclass. I mentioned the masterclass earlier. This whole live session is really around our masterclass because we've got a new session of the masterclass starting next week. And if you're interested in taking your Spanish to the next level, working through the materials of the masterclass over the next six months, then stay tuned because I'll be talking a little more about that a bit later on. But for our listening activity, you're going to listen to this conversation. And first time round, you won't see uh, a transcript. So just listen first time round. And then second time round, I'll let you see the transcript. So I'm going to ask you how it was. And one will be uh, very difficult. Two will be OK. And three will be really straightforward. Uh, so the same kind of idea as before. Uh, one really tricky. Two OK. And three uh, straightforward um, once we've listened to this. But let's have a listen now to our uh, first reading of this dialogue. Tengo que pedirte un favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? Tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. Por supuesto. Estupendo. Pues vamos a empezar. Primera pregunta. ¿Cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? Aproximadamente, claro. ¿Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos, por ejemplo? Pues no le recuerdo exactamente, pero yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. Íbamos más temprano, pero siempre comíamos en casa. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de la casa? Sí, ayudamos todos. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas, pero hacíamos cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla... Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias. ¿De nada? Ok. <laughs> so, Rosa finished off the, the, the interview there quite quickly, but we had lots of good examples of our imperfect tenses. So that was a little clip from one of our masterclass lessons and you heard the conversation between me and Rosa. Rosa was uh, doing a, a piece of, of an, an assignment and she had to find out uh, what things were like when I was at school. So she was asking me all about things that happened in the past and the way in which she was asking me used a lot of imperfects. So we're going to listen again. Um, maybe before we do, you could pop a number in the, the comments again. One, uh, that was pretty tricky. It was very fast. Two, you understood some of it. Three, it was fairly straightforward for you. Let me know your, your numbers and we'll have a listen this time with the transcript. So you're going to be hearing and seeing uh, the, the conversation at the same time. Tengo que pedirte un favor. 
¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? Tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. Por supuesto. Estupendo. Pues vamos a empezar. Primera pregunta. ¿Cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? Aproximadamente, claro. ¿Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos? Pues no lo recuerdo exactamente, pero yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. Íbamos más tempranos, pero siempre comíamos en casa. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de casa? Sí, ayudábamos todos. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas, pero hacíamos cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla... Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias, Mark. Okay, so was that easier with the transcript? I'm, I'm sure it was. Let's go through this whole text together now. I'm going to bring the, the text onto the screen and we can go through it together and we'll pick out all of those imperfect tenses too as we go through it. So, tengo que pedirte un favor. Rosa begins by saying, I need to ask you a favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? Can I ask you some questions, literally to make to you some questions? Para un trabajo de clase, for a work of class, for some homework, for an assignment. Tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. I need to compare how young people or children live nowadays, hoy en día, y cómo vivían and how they used to live hace años. So there's our first imperfect, vivían. That's from vivir, the verb to live, and they lived or they used to live uh, in the imperfect. And I say, por supuesto, of course. So Rosa continues, estupendo, pues vamos a empezar, let's get started. Primera pregunta, ¿cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? First question, how many hours of class did you have at school? Aproximadamente, claro. Approximately, of course. She makes a suggestion. Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos. Por ejemplo, you can compare this with your, your son's or your children's timetable, uh, for example. And I, uh, as, well, first of all, before we go on, we'll just pick up on the tenías. Um, you used to have, uh, or you had, another imperfect. And uh, I answer, pues no lo recuerdo exactamente. I don't remember exactly. Pero yo estaba en el colegio. Menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. But I was, not that imperfect, en el colegio, in school, menos tiempo, less time, del que están mis hijos, than my children are. Íbamos más temprano. We used to go earlier. Pero siempre comíamos en casa. But we always had lunch at home. So in a Spanish timetable, lunch would be middle of the afternoon for a UK-based sort of mindset. Um, but basically what I am saying here is that um, we uh, went earlier, but uh, we always were home by, by lunchtime. Okay, so let's just pick up on those uh, imperfects in here. There we go. So, vivían, tenías, estaba, íbamos, comíamos. So now let's look at the second part. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? What did you do in your spare time? En mi tiempo libre solía leer. In my free time, I tended to read. Now that solía is a really useful verb. It comes from soler. It means to tend to do something. I used to read. I tended to read. Y jugar con mis hermanos y, me, y mis vecinos. And play with my brothers and sisters and my neighbors. Rosa asks, ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de casa? Did you used to help? with the, whole, the housework. And I said, sí, ayudábamos todos. We all helped. So, ayudabas and ayudábamos, two further examples of our imperfect. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas. It's true that my mum took charge of most of the household chores, pero hacíamos cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, but we did things like uh, tidy our room, Poner la mesa, lay the table, quitarla, clear the table, and so on. 
Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias. Rosa has had enough. She's got enough information and she thanks me. Um, and once again, let's just pick up on those. Um, let me see if I can do that wrong one. There we go. Um, those uh, imperfect tense there. So, hacías, solía, ayudabas, ayudábamos, se encargaba, hacíamos. All examples of the imperfect tense, just as we've seen in our uh, the start of this lesson when we were looking at how the imperfect is formed. So hopefully now that we've gone through that, the numbers will rise. Hopefully we'll get fewer ones and twos and maybe more twos and threes now that we've worked our way through the explanations there um, of the, the text that we, we covered together. So as I said, this content is coming from our masterclass. I'll just come back to my slides. We've done our listening activity. I would like to take it further now and talk a little more about the masterclass and how the masterclass works. It is a series of, of lessons that all focus around a coffee break length. So the length of a coffee break, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, when we can listen together and learn and, and work together. Sorry, I'm just going to have to cough. So apologies for this. I'm going to mute my microphone. Um, Sorry about that. Um, I have been talking for quite a lot today, so uh, for quite a long time. So apologies about that. So coffee break length. These are coffee break length lessons, 15 to 20 minutes. And if you can afford that 15 or 20 minutes a day, then you'll be able to work on the masterclass. No bother at all. And it's coffee break style, so everything's friendly. It's like going for a, a coffee with your friend who happens to be an expert Spanish teacher and that you are experiencing that relaxed, enjoyable lesson. And also coffee break quality. We pride ourselves in putting together high quality audio, video and text materials to help you master the language and make progress like never before. Let's take a look at the curriculum for the masterclass. It's organised in six modules. So again, these six modules go across six months. So the first month, sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to cough again. I really apologise for this. Um, Sorry. Okay. Organized in six months. The first one, the first month starting in October is frases hechas. Now, frases hechas are idiomatic expressions. So these are those lovely expressions that help you sound more authentic when you're using Spanish. So we'll look at different frases hechas in each episode and there will be five lessons in the month and uh, we'll provide uh, additional materials to help you consolidate what you've learned. And the crucial thing is here, we're not just looking at one idiomatic expression. We're looking at an idiomatic expression or two or three within the context of a conversation, just like the conversation we've just heard with Rosa, um, where we're, there's a dialogue, there's a situation, and we're hearing that frasecita or the frasecita in that, that context. In November, sorry, <clears throat> in November, we'll move on to tricky verbs. And this is a module where we're focusing on those verbs that can be just a little bit tricky to use. Verbs that you might be familiar with. I'm thinking of an example like dar. Dar means to give. But it's also a verb that's used very varied in very varied situations um, because it, it can be used to mean lots of different things and different expressions and so on. So that's just one example. But we'll look at different tricky verbs through the module. Um, and again, you'll be seeing all of this in the context of um, conversations and dialogues uh, and, and fun lessons like what we've just done. Um, in December, we'll move on to a module on false friends. Now, false friends are those words that you think you know what they mean, but you don't quite know because they actually mean something completely different. They just look like an English word, but they mean something different. And again, in this module, it's a little bit more vocabulary-based rather than grammar-based, but we'll be seeing examples of the phrases hitas that we've already learned. We'll be seeing the tricky verbs, and they'll be coming back up so that you're used to seeing them and you're getting more used to uh, experiencing them with the false friends module in December. <clears throat> Sorry. In uh, January, then we'll be doing a module on tense mastery. That's where we'll be uh, mastering five or six different tenses, looking at different ways in which you use them. That's where the imperfect came from. Um, we will be picking up 
uh, on these tenses, using them in lots of, ex of, of situations. And crucially, we will also see um, how, the, how, the, how you choose which tense to use. For example, if you're thinking about the past, to use imperfect or preterite or perfect or pluperfect and so on. And then it's time for the subjunctive in February. Um, this is a, a topic which many learners are a little scared about, um, but in this module we really try to help you realise that the subjunctive is not a tricky thing. You just really need to learn some new patterns and you need to know uh, some of the triggers for the subjunctive. Finally, Tricky Spanish, our module on Tricky Spanish, module 6, where we pick up on some of those really tricky aspects of Spanish and help you completely master, for example, por and para, or the personal a, and so on. So that's our six modules of Spanish. Sorry, uh, this is not going well today. I keep having to stop to cough. Um, Becky is <laughs> pointing out uh, a very good example of a false friend, embarazada. It looks like embarrassed, but it does not mean embarrassed. It means pregnant. Um, so a great example there of a false friend. And I'm sure that one will come up in our false friends module. Moving on, looking at the schedule of the masterclass. I'll bring this up on screen. I think I've got this that we can share. You should be able to see this. So the schedule of the masterclass is based around lessons every couple of days for the first half of the month. So this is October. You'll get a, a lesson on uh, Monday the 2nd. Sorry, one more cough. And then another lesson on Wednesday the 4th. And these lessons are just published on those those dates, so it's not the case that you have to take that lesson on the Monday or on the Wednesday. They're just made available to you, and you can work through them at your own pace. Um, you'll get another lesson the second week, so that's lesson three on the second week of October. And then before we go on to lesson four, we'll do an activity, and that will be an activity to help you practice what you've covered in lessons one, two, and three. Then we'll return to the lessons for week three, um, where we've got a lesson on the 16th and the 18th. Again, these are lessons published on those days. They're not uh, the lessons that you have to do those days. Um, but the five lessons of the month plus the activity will take up the first half of the month, two thirds of the month, if you like. And then at the end of the month, we've got our video checklist um, and our video uh, review of the, the topics and then a test towards the end of the month where you can test what you've learned and uh, it's not a complex test, it's just something that you can do, uh, a multiple choice test that you can do to check what you've learned over the course of the month. So that's the, the schedule of the masterclass. A target audience, um, we get asked this very often, and you know, is the, the masterclass right for me at this point? And the masterclass is aimed at learners who are around the, uh, the, let me bring this on. Yeah, so between the B1, B2 level of the Common European Framework of Reference. So there you'll see that it's, it's between lower intermediate and upper intermediate. It's not yet at the C level. It's around the Coffee Break Spanish Season 3 level. If you've completed season two, then the masterclass is good for you. If you're working on season three, then the masterclass is again good for you. If you've gone beyond season three and are on season four, but want a little bit of uh, review, then again, um, you might find the masterclass good for you for that level. But that's where we place it, kind of between B1 and B2, or around about our season three level of the class. So that's our target audience. Um, I... Again, if you've got questions, please do ask the questions. I'm very happy to answer the questions um, in just a moment. Um, the pricing of the masterclass. So for the masterclass, you're getting five lessons per month. You get the bonus activities. You get the module test, email check-ins, guaranteed feedback from our tutors. And I'll go through that in a moment. And a course certificate. And the, the cost for that is a one-off payment of $399. 
Um, the cost is in dollars only. Um, you can obviously pay in any currency, um, but that will automatically be converted to dollars at uh, the, the purchase time. And I should also say that that cost includes any taxes that you may have to pay depending on where you are located um, because everyone pays the tax in their local area um, wherever it is sold for a, a digital product. Um, and uh, that price, it doesn't change. That's the one price. It, there's not going to be tax on top of that, for example. Um, I mentioned there about the check-ins, uh, sorry, the uh, guaranteed feedback. Let me just bring up this slide. So this summarizes the masterclass. You get six months, six modules, five audio lessons monthly. There's a course booklet that you can work through with the lesson notes and uh, work through all of that. Um, the bonus resources which we help you consolidate at the end of a, 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 the month and then the homework tasks which you'll submit for each uh, lesson and that's not an onerous task, it's just a short exercise or a short activity where you're practicing um, the content that you're working through and then VIP support, this is the crucial bit where your homework will be corrected and your questions answered by our expert masterclass tutors. So the idea is that when you post your homework, we'll get back to you and provide feedback on what you've uh, written. But also, and uh, this is even more important, you'll also see the feedback that everyone else got. So you'll be able to see where other people went wrong and uh, learn from that. And everyone learns together. It's very much a masterclass. Um, so hopefully that explains all of that aspect there. So questions. I know we do have some questions and I, I'm going to tackle all of these now. I'm very happy to answer any other questions if you've got them, if my voice holds out. Um, but let's come now to our first question from uh, DW, um, who's joining us from Las Vegas. Great to know. Um, currently in early season three, would Masterclass interrupt my season three progress? Should the Masterclass take priority? Really good question. Because if you've just started season three, I would say that the season three is a little different from the Masterclass in the sense that when season three, in, in season three, we kind of focus on, on different topics. There are conversations, natural conversations and so on that come up. But the topics that we focus on as we go through season three come up when they come up. It's not structured in a sense. So I would suggest that if you're very comfortable with the season two materials and you've also done things like our travel diaries or our magazine courses, then perhaps the masterclass will help you get a, a more solid grounding before you go on and do the rest of season three. We'll not be running the masterclass for another few months, so it may be a good time to do that right now. Um, but you, it, it can work alongside season three, if that makes sense, because it's a similar level. They're just very different courses. And obviously with the masterclass, you get all the support. You can ask questions. You can get the, uh, the, the, the tutor support and everything um, there. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, we've got some other questions. I'm just scrolling down our list of questions. <laughs> Kelly's saying, totally learn Spanish from you for my move to Costa Rica. Que bien, que bien, que bien. Okay, let's move on down here. Um, <laughs> David saying, llevar seems multifaceted. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> llevar is another interesting verb. Becky saying, my work commitments are too high, even in the coffee break format. I work in education. However, this sounds amazing. I'm at B1 level. Will you run again after February? Um, yeah, we will be running the masterclass again. I would say, Becky, that if you are interested, uh, we also have our coffee break club where we have literally hundreds of videos that are five minutes or 10 minutes, and it's the best way to get a little bit of learning in every day. Um, if you're still here uh, 35 minutes into this uh, this chat today, then maybe you would have time for a, a couple of five or 10 minute videos um, on a regular basis. And that you can find that at coffeebreaktv.com. Selma saying, uh, at the moment, there's no masterclass in Italian. Are you planning one? My lips are sealed. I can't say anything about that right now. But you might want to tune in on the 10th of October to find out more about our uh, plans for other languages and for uh, this. 
Dana is saying, for anyone thinking about taking the class, I absolutely love it. I make time to work on it here and there during the week around my work schedule. I've seen a huge improvement in my Spanish, even though I've been studying it most of my life. Highly recommend it. Now, I have to say that this was not an arranged uh, testimonial from Dana there. Uh, but thank you so much. That really is fantastic to hear. We have got a current masterclass running. Uh, we started one in June. Um, we started another one in, back in February, um, and that one's finished now, but uh, the class runs for six months, where so June class is ongoing, um, and uh, the, that, that's perfect to know that Dana, or Dana, hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, is enjoying it. Um, and Becky saying, Coffee Break Club, amazing, thank you. Yes, so check that out at Coffee Break TV. Monica's asking, um, would this be appropriate for someone who used to have good Spanish but hasn't used it for ages and wants to pick it all up again, especially the speed? Yeah, exactly, Monica. I would say that one of the things that you'll find, that you might have noticed this already with the conversation that we had, the first time we heard the conversation, it was pretty much at normal speed. And then when we were listening to it with the soundtrack, with the, sorry, with the, uh, with the transcript, it was a little bit of, of a slower speed. Now, this is not technologically slowed down. We've recorded that conversation twice. One is in a slow version and one's in a normal speed version. So it's natural sounding every time. And the idea with that is that it's helping you build your understanding and build your listening skills more so as you hear these conversations again and again. But again, it's also not just a conversation that we say, listen to this and learn. We analyse it, we go through it in detail, we talk about all of the aspects of the conversation in our lessons, in the audio lessons for the masterclass. So yes, Monica, I would say have a think about this, it might be right up your street. And if you are interested in the Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass, then go to coffeebreakspanishmasterclass.com um, or search for Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass in Google or indeed any other um, <laughs> search engine and you'll find the latest edition of the Masterclass. It's the one that's October 2023. If you see a, an earlier edition, um, then uh, obviously don't sign up for that because those ones are either finished or uh, they're, uh, for the, they're, they're in the middle of, of running. But obviously the only one that's open for uh, purchase at the moment is our Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass of October 2023. Let me share with you, uh, we've had Dana sharing her thoughts on the Masterclass, but let me share with you some other thoughts from other uh, learners like you who have gone through the Masterclass before. I enjoyed having the time frame in which I was responsible to myself to work through each lesson. Before, unless I was taking the class in person, I would seem to always find an excuse on why I didn't finish the chapter or didn't finish reading the book that I was reading. So by being part of this class, it kept me on task. I love being part of this group. It, it gave me a reason to, to log in and to see what the next assignment was, to listen to the next conversation. It helped me stay continuing on and not giving up. It was perfect for me and I think it's gonna be perfect for so many others, thank you. I particularly love getting live feedback for the homework assignments, but I also love the specific subjects that you chose to focus on each month. They were perfect. For me, what I um, have enjoyed learning most of all is that I have a good ear for listening and the engaging audio uh, segments for each lesson have really, uh, I really enjoyed them. And they've really made me feel confident that I can understand what's said um, and the way it's broken down. I've learned more from them, um, but it's, it's really developed my confidence on that um, comprehension, which I appreciate. I appreciated that the dialogue was, was, was spoken twice. So first at a regular speed and then again at a, at a slower speed. As a beginner, that really helped me to understand. The course helped me to sort of pull it all together. It was also a great refresher as I relearned, so to speak, things that I once learned but had forgotten. Um, perhaps best of all, I think I finally have a handle on the subjunctive. Mostly, I, I think there's been a lot of effort put into creating content that's challenging at this level, and I find there isn't much else available that I found um, that uh, is working for me. So thank you for putting that together. 
And I have filled my notebook with all sorts of tips and tricks and explanations that I picked up throughout the course that helped me to remember. And I will always be able to, to go back and, and review this material if needed. Um, getting feedback from the tutors on homework and answering the questions was great because sometimes I tried to make challenging sentences that I wasn't too sure about. And the tutors helped give me really helpful uh, feedback and helped me to understand. It's perfect for intermediate or advanced students. Um, it's really great that students can do the class at their own pace, but also get live feedback on homework assignments. That's just an amazingly good feature, I think, and I found it very helpful. I'd, I'd recommend the master class um, to people who are um, interested at the advanced level because there is um, not much engaging content, um, I find, for that level of learner. And um, because you've really spent the time to think about how to advance um, and how to make the content um, meet the needs of the uh, advanced level learner. I love that, especially with the master class, I have a dedicated schedule to follow. So it kind of forces me to sit down and do my homework. Um, but at the same time, I can do it at my own pace. So I don't have to be there at a certain time and be in class and be seated. So this has helped me tremendously because I'm, I'm more at my age of working at my own pace. I also like that the tests are self-graded so I can go back over them and retake them and look at what I did wrong and go over it again and again for now and also in the future i can redo it again so i am um I, it's an enormous enormous help for me since i have test anxiety so it's nice of, to know that i can look at this many many times over so thank you yeah I, I, this is perfect for me and i think it's perfect for so many others as well i really appreciated the structure of a, a regular monthly study plan that that really helped me stay accountable to the course uh, i probably would not have made this much progress on my own so i hope that gives you a little flavor of some of our previous students who have taken the master class a couple more questions have come in while we were watching that um, first of all, does feedback stop at the end of six months? So yes, the feedback and the support stops at the end of the six months. Um, you will still have access to all the materials. You'll be able to work through them beyond that. Um, but we will not be continuing to provide homework corrections and answering questions at the end of those six months. So it is a six-month course. We work through it together um, as, a, as a cohort, uh, if you like. And Yugi's saying, is it supposed to land on a page for Coffee Break French? No, it's not. If you go to Coffee Break French, Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass.com and you enter that in your address bar, you should very much end up on the Coffee Break Spanish uh, Masterclass page. If you're struggling, um, you can go to, if you, if, really, if you search for Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass, I've just done this to double check. Um, you can go to the Coffee Break Academy. If you head to the Coffee Break Academy, you'll see there um, that you've got the option to to buy either the French or the Spanish. Both Spanish and French are running uh, starting in October. Um, but you'll definitely be able to find it if you Google Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass. Um, you'll find it there. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias. I hope that you've learned something in, in this session. Clearly, uh, we were wanting to, to focus on the imperfect tense, and we hope that you've now learned a little more about the imperfect. Um, we hope that you have learned a little more about the masterclass. All the information is here at coffeebreakspanishmasterclass.com and uh, the team can perhaps put the direct link in the uh, upper, the in, in the uh, what do you call it? The comments. Sorry, I'm really tired. Um, the the actual link, direct link. Um, you'll be able to access the link there. Um, just a couple of uh, other questions and comments. So Yuki's saying, no te preocupes. Uh, we'll need the French one as well, but later. Um, Becky's saying, love the imperfect tense class, Mark. Really generous. No problem at all. Um, and Monica's saying, as long as you get the use of constipado right, <laughs> indeed. Um, Sally's saying, I really enjoyed the masterclass when I did it. My favorite lesson was the phrases. I have enjoyed you. Estoy aburrida como una ostra several times. <laughs> Fantastic. Great to know. Um, Denise saying, I understand there's no support after six months. Does that mean no certificate either? No, 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 no. You'll get a certificate for completing the masterclass, if, assuming you complete all of the uh, the modules and you take your final test. Um, but the, the support, the ongoing support for the particular lessons in the masterclass will stop after the six months. 
that's it for today. I'm sorry about all the coughing. Um, I hope that didn't put you <laughs> put you off too much. Um, you can find out everything you need to know about the masterclass up here, um, there, or click the link that's in the comments or the description of this video. If you've been watching live, thank you very much. If you've watched the replay after the event, then I hope that this has been useful to you too. Muchísimas gracias y hasta la próxima.